after the US, Canada, and the Bahamas, and we are the largest producer of oil and gas in the Caribbean. Our currency is based on a floating peg system to the US dollar and has shown itself to be high, highly stable over the last 20 years. We are also the commercial banking hub for CARICOM and the region. So what are the top reasons to invest in Trinidad and Tobago? Well, they include low business costs. Trinidad and Tobago has one of the lowest electricity rates worldwide, starting at 0 0.03 per kilowatt, which minimizes business startup and operational costs. We have wide ranging market access with major export partners such as the US, Mexico, Brazil, Spain, South Korea, and the Netherlands. And as a member of CARICOM and the single market economy, we enjoy preferential access to 13 states and access to approximately 999 million consumers through bilateral and other preferential trade agreements. We also offer world-class infrastructure with an extensive transportation network of roads to international ports, reliable power generation facilities, and five undersea fiber connections. In other words, Trinidad and Tobago is an attractive investment location. You should be seeing it there now. That is where Invest TT Trinidad and Tobago comes in. We are our country's national investment promotion agency aligned to the Ministry of Trade and Industry. We are the first point of contact for investors seeking investment opportunities in Trinidad and Tobago, and our remit is to attract and retain both foreign and local direct investment outside of our energy sector, as per our government's diversification drive to wean our economy off of our reliance on oil and gas. Our responsibilities include investor sourcing, facilitation, aftercare, and policy advocacy. In the form of strategic outbound and streamed inbound sourcing, strategic outbound refers to specific sectors as per government policies. These are agribusiness, clean tech, creative, downstream energy, financial services, ICT, light manufacturing, maritime, and tourism. Streamlined inbound, on the other hand, refers to any investment interest that we receive, regardless of sector, as long as it does not belong to oil or gas. Other services that we provide include delivery of key sector information, provision of market data, statistics, and country information, real estate identification, market and investment opportunity identification, site visit facilitation, which speaks to the coordination of business-to-business -business meetings, business oper operationalization assistance, aftercare services, value chain advisory, and business plan review. Now to our PIOs. In 2019, we set out with an objective to identify investment opportunities that, we see, that you see before you. I'll just touch briefly on a couple of them. In electricity intensive manufacturing, we are targeting any industry that makes products using raw materials and or energy intensive inputs, for example, food and beverage or tobacco product manufacturing. Our value proposition in this regard is again, our low electricity costs are second cheapest in the Western Hemisphere. Our regional and international trade agreements grant preferential access to over 1.2 billion people. And we are strategically located at the heart of the Americas, which serves as a gateway to Latin America, the United States, and Canada. For logistics, we are positioning Trinidad and Tobago as a potential hub for designated area to deal with activities related to transportation, organization, separation, coordination, and distribution of goods for national and international transit, and on a commercial basis by regional and international operators. In offshore transshipments, we are looking for companies engaged in commodities industries in South America that may be experiencing significant issues getting ores and other minerals to destination markets. This is because of our proximity to source markets, the fact that we can offer a large, naturally sheltered deep harbor, and due to our developed maritime infrastructure, as well as industry support mechanisms. So let's talk a little about incentives in the manufacturing sector. These are fiscal, import duty concessions, approved small company status, 
and allowances to the manufacturing sector. I'll touch quickly on each. Fiscal incentives are benefits granted to large-scale manufacturers under the provisions of the Fiscal Incentives Act. Projects qualifying for fiscal incentives normally fall within one of the five classifications outlined. Under the provisions, a company can benefit from exemptions from custom duties, value-added tax, and income tax on dividends. Import duty concessions, on the other hand, are granted to qualifying manufacturers that produce products locally in Trinidad and Tobago. They also allow qualifying local manufacturers to receive concessions on import duties for items that they import as supplies in order to meet their manufacturing needs. What this means is that manufacturers may be granted import duty concessions in areas such as raw materials, machinery, equipment, and even in some cases, packaging. Approved small company status is a designation granted to a limited liability company, allowing it to derive a tax relief for a period of five years under the Corporation Tax Act in the form of a tax credit. And finally, the allowances to the manufacturing sector. What this says is that where a person carrying on a trade includes capital expenditure or the provision of machinery or plant for the purposes of that trade, it shall be made to him for the year of assessment on the basis of period for which the expenditure has occurred an initial allowance equal to 90% of the expenditure incurred in the provision of machinery and plant for the purposes of that trade. It would be remiss of me as well not to mention that there does exist a steel pan manufacturing grant which is available to sole proprietors, partnerships and companies wholly owned by Trinidad and Tobago nationals, registered and operating in Trinidad, in Trinidad and Tobago. And it provides financial support for the acquisition of new machinery, equipment, software, tools, raw materials, and training. As I mentioned before, Investity is also responsible for tenanting a number of industrial parks across Trinidad and Tobago. These include the Tamil and Tech Park, the Moruga Agro-Processing and Light Industrial Park, and our newest, the Phoenix Park Industrial Estate, or PPIE. Located on 144 acres of land in central Trinidad, the PPIE is the first project to be developed in the Caribbean under the China Belt and Road Initiative. The park is just 10 minutes away from the port of Ponlisas, and lot sizes range from 0.5 to 2.1 acres and 10 acres. Here you can see the infrastructure of which the park will be equipped with. We believe that the park will provide a unique location for domestic and international investors and will be ideally suited for businesses operated in manufacturing and assembly, logistics and distribution, and ICT industries. Factory shells start at $1.50 US per square foot per month and can accommodate one to four tenants. Landlords start at US dollars. 15,800 per acre per annum. So let's talk about our national treasure, that which captures the essence of our creativity and our enjoyment of life. There are, of course, two aspects of the pan. The music, which is the most visible to the general population and includes performance, entertainment, and all related activities, recording and music production, event production and management, teaching and instruction services, music composition and arranging, and so forth. For the purpose of today's presentation, however, we are going to concentrate on the instrument, a relatively unknown arena, which includes production of instruments and accessories, all related manufacturing activities, service of instruments and accessories, and supply sales related and training. What our research tells us is that the steel pan manufacturing industry comprises of a couple of major manufacturers that employ 10 to 25 persons, followed by several smaller scale operations with two to eight workers, and then several individual operators. As far as we can tell, there are only three established pan manufacturing businesses in Trinidad. However, a large number of tuners also involved in the direct sale of instruments to customers also exist. 
Internationally, there are manufacturers in the USA and Canada that also produce steel pan. And just as in Trinidad and Tobago, there are also individual tuners who produce, who produce and sell finished instruments. The industry in Trinidad and Tobago is, is estimated to employ 150 persons as of 2017, with approximately 40 qualified experienced tuners. This is largely considered a craft or artisan type industry, both in respect of the making of the pans, as well as the tuning of the instrument and the production process is highly labor intensive, utilizing both unskilled and skilled labor. In addition to the traditional steel pan, there's also the fire and G pan, which are not in production commercially. There are three categories of manufacturers that can be categorized broadly as major manufacturers who employ over 15 persons on a full or part-time basis and generally use marketing and proactive sales strategies. Shop manufacturers are smaller groups organized to produce with mainly contract employees and individuals are those centered on an individual tuner or pan maker who will subcontract other skills and services. Larger facilities generally use warehouse or factory shelves, have installed air and controlled spaces for tuning and preparation, and may also include coating operations of varying capabilities. Space consideration in all facilities determine capacities such as storage or raw materials, work in progress, and finished goods. Individual or shop manufacturers, on the other hand, typically work out of much smaller spaces, or even in some cases, at their homes. So this table highlights the average production costs within the industry. Other than a tenor pan, all other instruments consist of combinations of multiple drums of varying note sizes and skirt lengths. So for instance, typical band sizes vary from small bands at 60 members, medium at 90, and large bands as, as many as 120 or sometimes even more. This table conversely shows the average prices at which the instruments are sold. So as you take in this information, I want you to bear in mind that in Trinidad and Tobago alone, there are an estimated 250 adult steel bands and about 200 school steel bands. Consider too that steel bands involve an estimated 6,000 panists at Carnival Time for Panorama. Apart from the Caribbean region, steel bands are also to be found in North America, the UK, Europe and Japan. So therefore, assuming there are about 1,200 to 1,500 steel bands outside of Trinidad and Tobago, with each consisting of roughly 15 to 30 members, that would mean 30,000 to 45,000 persons involved with playing steel band music, music worldwide. And so you begin to see the business potential. After sales maintenance and pan manufacturing space also offers viable opportunities. So for instance, tuning is done two or three times a year at a cost of 400 to 500 per pan. This does not reflect either the tuning done for steel bands during the peak panorama season, where tuning is done before each leg of the competition. There also exists downstream employment opportunities in the industry. So besides tuning, there's conducting, there's transcribing, building, which means not necessarily steel band, but conversion of a raw steel drum into a foam pan. There's teaching, there's performing. As far as market potential for the instrument goes, it is expected that pan music has followed the diaspora. And so the logical export markets should be the USA, UK, and Canada because of the heavy Caribbean influence in those countries. Market segments that can be identified include orchestras, ensembles, school bands, solo panels, and souvenirs, with the best international opportunity for steel pan being to market to school systems as a musical instrument that is easy to gain basic proficiency in, which provides a direct path to both individual and group musical expression. So 
if we were to use China as an example, which has about 514,000 schools with over 216 million students, China as a target for skill for steel pan would make perfect sense as it is in the top five countries in music product sales market share and it is likely in the top two in the largest education systems globally, rivaled only by India. The timing for addressing the target markets is both short-term and medium-term, however. So in the shorter term, the diaspora markets might produce wins as there will be already existing market demand and infrastructure for export. In the medium term, knowledge of the products will have to be cultivated before the export potential can be realized. So what does this all mean? Well, despite the industry being relatively small by any measure, the development of local steel pan manufacturing for exports has the potential to increase local employment in the industry, boost foreign exchange generation, and promote economic diversification in Trinidad and Tobago through positive spillover effects on other products and industries. While pans and pan-related accessories are the main tradable goods, it is important to recognize that there are other key ancillary services, particularly in pan tuning and pan arranging, that can also drive the pan economy. Additionally, a major output of the industry is the opportunity it presents for economic activity in communities that are challenged on many social levels. Entry-level qualifications of academic and work experience is minimal, and skills can be developed by willing male or female, young and old persons with very little capital inputs. Careers can easily emerge from this demographic in a profession of international significance. Communities can be enhanced with significant employment options and consequent economic activity. Because it is already associated with the Caribbean, it has the potential to create positive associations with other products and services which we export, thus infusing those products and services with the characteristics of the steel pan and Caribbean life and enhancing the unique value proposition of those products and services. So in summation, in effect, we believe that the steel pan has the potential value as a brand, a marketable brand to take to market. And that brings me to the end of today's presentation. So I'll open up the floor now for any questions. Okay, so assuming then that there are no questions, I'd like to thank you all for your time. Um, and please do reach out to InvestDT for any of your investment needs. I can do Augusta, I'm seeing your question. Um, I have your phone number and um, you can talk offline about that. I'll, I'll give you a call later on that. So again, thank you all for your time. Have yourselves a good day and be safe.